Hey everyone, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap with the Fairy Tale Page Kit Workshop. I've got my kit, my trimmer, and then this handy accordion pocket file organizer because we're going to be trimming all the papers for all eight of the layouts we're about to make at the same time and then file the pieces in the pockets accordingly. I'm going to take all of the goodies that came in the kit, that includes the ribbon and the puffy stars, all the charms, all the little doodads that came in the fairy tale page kit and set those aside for safekeeping while we get everything else in order. I usually like to take the, the 12 pack of photo mats and put them into the pockets according to what layout they're used on so we get some filing practice in right up front. Be mindful that the aqua or the blue photo mat and the purple photo mats are duplex paper so if I flip everything over it's just the opposite color is on the other side. So I'm gonna to try to help avoid confusion with that just by always referring to the color that I want you to place into the pocket on top. We're gonna to start out by finding two aqua photo mats. So if you look, you can tell the difference. The blue is much brighter and the aqua has a little bit more green tone to it. So take two of those and put them into the first pocket labeled one and two. Next, we're gonna take two blue photo mats and they're really nice thick heavy paper. Just make sure blue side's facing up and put those into pocket three and four. And then all three of the pink mats. These are metallic textured paper. They're really beautiful. All three of them, again, those go in pocket three and four. Next, let's take two of the purple photo mats and then one aqua mat. Put all of those in pocket five and six. Then you should have one of each left, one blue and one purple. Those are going to go into pocket seven and eight. The next thing we'll do is take all of the paper that we have in uh, provided to us in the pack of paper that came in your kit, and we're going to put it in the order that we'll be trimming it. So again, because of the duplex paper, I'm going to have you uh, build the, the pile face down. So just grab the entire stack of paper, put it in the crook of your arm so you can easily get to it from the top edge and see everything. And we'll put everything face down on the trimmer as we locate it. So I want you to first find the print called the dragon print. And you'll, you'll recognize right away why we called it that. Here we do have the dragon, the unicorns in the left corner. And I'm going to have you take one of those and put it face down on your trimmer base. And so then it's going to be white side facing up. Next, find one sheet of the blue and weirdly, I'm just going to have you put it face down and that, that means the purple is going to end up facing up. Then I want you to find one sheet of the purple, put it face down on your trimmer base. I know it's a little weird. And then find the aqua. This is aqua on both sides, so just place that on your trimmer. Next, let's find some cut aparts, and I'm, I'm gonna have you find the one that has the two circles, and then it says once upon a time on this edge. Put that face down. Then another cut apart, this is primarily blue and lavender tones, put that face down. Next, I'm gonna have you find two pink, and you'll notice the pink has a texture on one side and it's really smooth on the other. So I'm going to put texture side facing down. Then I want you to locate the other dragon print. So that has the dragon in the lower right corner, followed by the other aqua plane. So that's this one, the one that has a little more green tone value. Next we'll take a blue plane. So we'll put that face down. So the lavender is going to be facing up, followed by this uh, castle print. It has the castle and the carriage on it both. Then another castle carriage, followed by the purple. And you know, that's the last piece we have. We'll put that face down. So if you get messed up at all with that duplex paper, either rewatch this section or just as we work through the layouts one at a time, just verify you have the correct side of the paper facing up. With everything sorted, we're gonna start with the trimming process. And um, as a general rule, just always make sure the paper you're trimming is flush with the top edge of this guide right here so you have a nice 90 degree cut every time. Also let the paper pile up to the right of the trimmer base as we cut each individual piece until I tell you to move it, rotate it, trim it, or file it, okay? <laughs> So if you're new to measuring also, that can be sometimes challenging if it's, if you haven't really measured. And, and when I take a poll in live classrooms, usually half the people in the class don't measure when they scrapbook. So we're gonna change that for you a little bit. And if I'm going too fast, you can adjust the playback speed on your YouTube channel by clicking on the gear button and then changing the speed to like 0.75 or 0.5 to slow me down.
The first number we're looking for is eight and a half inches. So usually to find that measurement, I look at find the whole number eight, and you have to go to the left to increase it to eight and a half. And every vertical line on this trimmer base represents a quarter of an inch. So that's eight, eight and a quarter, eight and a half. Be mindful that the paper is in the trimmer right side up. So this unicorn should be over here on the left. I will stabilize on the clear bar before you slice. <laughs> Okay, now slide down to five. So we're gonna take this unicorn portion of the print and put it into pocket seven and eight. Now keep in mind too that these pockets are only 12 inches wide. So I'm gonna put this into the pocket at an angle so it sticks out on the right and I can still see the numbers on the left. And if you don't have an accordion pocket file, I want you to have four separate piles, one for each double page spread we're working on. Next, I'm gonna have you take this narrower piece, this is three and a half by 12, and rotate it so it's horizontal in the trimmer. If you want, I have this darker blue area on the right, but it, it really doesn't matter. And let's cut at 10 and a half. So again, find 10, go to the left two vertical columns, that's 10 and a half, then seven, and three and a half. So what we just created here are three squares. And all three of them go into pocket five and six. And then you do have this little rectangle here. I'm gonna have you trim this horizontally at three and one and a half. So this is where pressing on that clear bar really helps when you're cutting something small in this big trimmer. It keeps everything where it needs to be. Now you can take both of these little squares you made, flip them over so the white side is facing up and put those in pocket five and six. I regret to inform you that this is a scrap. <laughs> and then we have this uh, section of the print that has the dragon on it. That's gonna go in pocket one and two, again, at a slight angle. And then let's take the next sheet of paper we have facing up, this is the blue, okay? So if it's, if it's not blue, flip it over to the blue side. <laughs> okay, let's trim again at 10 and a half, 10 and a half, and then nine, eight and a quarter. So again, find eight, go to the left, one vertical column. And finally, four. Take the four inch piece, rotate it, and cut at six. You're cutting it in half. Take these two rectangles you just made and put them in pockets seven and eight. And then grab the next piece. This is a four and a quarter by 12 right now. We're gonna cut this at nine and three quarters. And five and a half. All right, take this larger five and a half inch piece, put it in pocket one and two. The next piece is square. <laughs> we'll put that in five and six. And then we have this rectangle. This goes in seven and eight. Lastly, we have some strips left over. I picked up all the strips. The skinniest one goes in one and two at an angle. And then the remaining two will go in pocket five and six. If you're following along with me on the printed instructions, I've just completed everything for step two, and you can see how I have these little pairs of numbers on each piece we create. That's what's telling me which pocket or which layout that piece will live on. So now I'm moving on to page two of my instructions, and we're gonna pick up that purple plane. We'll start by making a whole bunch of narrow strips by trimming at large numbers. So I'm gonna cut at 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter and notice I'm not moving these pieces as they land let them be where they landed now we're gonna slide from 11 and a quarter we're gonna go down to 10 and three quarters and then seven and a half and then four now rotate the four inch piece, and once again, we're gonna cut this in half at six inches. Take both pieces that you just made and put them in pocket one and two. Pick up the very next piece. This right now is three and a half by 12. And we're gonna cut it on all the numbers divisible by three. <laughs> so we start out at nine, then we go to six, and then we go to three. Nine, six, three. And we just made four rectangles that are the same. Those will be used on layout seven and eight. Next, pick up the three and a quarter inch uh, purple that's right in the stack on the top of the pile. And our first cut here is gonna be at nine and three quarters. 
seven and a half, five and a quarter, and three. All right, this almost square <laughs> that goes in pocket three and four. All the rest of the pieces in the pile are the same size. Let's take one of them, put it in pocket three and four. Two of them are used in five and six, and the remaining in seven and eight. Finally, let's pick up all the remaining little tiny pieces. You see you have one kind of wider one and the rest are really skinny. But the wider one, this is only a half an inch wide, but this wider, that goes in one and two. And then the remaining three really skinny strips, those go in seven and eight. Let's pick up the aqua. We'll cut this at 11 and three quarter, once again, to make a tiny strip. Then 11, 10, and six and a quarter. Rotate and we'll cut at 11 and three quarters again. Eight and a half, four and a quarter. Okay, we have the rectangle, another rectangle the same size, and finally another really skinnier rectangle the same width. All of them are used in layout one and two, and then you should have this tiny little piece, that's a scrap. <laughs> Okay, now let's take this next strip. This was at the top of the pile, and it's three and three quarter by 12. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up the three rectangles, or squares rather, put them all in pocket five and six, and then you have this little piece here. It's three quarters of an inch. We're also using that in pocket five and six. And then you have your remaining little strips. All three of them, they're three different sizes. They all go in pocket one and two, nice and easy. We're moving on now to the cut aparts. These really help us finish our pages with titles, anchoring strips, embellishments, and journaling prompts. And in order to get the most accurate start to our trimming of these pieces, we've printed these slightly larger and included some crop marks on each corner. And those indicate where we want our trimmer to cut and remove an eighth of an inch border from this whole thing. So we start out with a perfect 12 by 12. I'm gonna place this in the trimmer so that the, the line of that crop mark matches the outside edge of my stainless steel blade. At first cut's always a little bit harder because the paper is so large. So if you fall shy of that cut a little bit, don't worry about it. I'm gonna get it on my next uh, final rotation. I'm just gonna rotate and try to line up. Now I'm looking at the top and the bottom corners here to make sure that line is level with the edge of my blade or the edge of that stainless steel um, guide here on the right. I'm gonna rotate again, realign, top and bottom I'm looking. And I can also look here on the left and verify that I'm at 12 inches. I'm gonna rotate one more time, again, and cut at 12. And then finally, I'm gonna give one more little neaten up cut here, because when I first cut, I was a little shy of that guideline. And you can see with this trimmer, if you don't have this trimmer, I mean, this, this speaks volumes. I was able to shave off just this little curly cue from the edge of that piece and uh, to get a really nice accurate cut. So not every large trimmer like this is capable of those nice accurate cuts. With this paper positioned with the words once upon a time on the right and the circle in the left, you'll cut at 10 and three quarters. Now allow all these pieces to pile up. Do not move them because it's just easier to file. Now move down to nine and a half and seven and a half. Five and a half, and three. Next, rotate, and we'll cut at seven, six, and three. Nice whole numbers there. Now let's file the pieces we just created. So we have this circle that says metal knot. That's gonna go in pocket one and two. The darker blue circle, seven and eight. We have this little strip that says magical. That's used on layout five and six. And then the castle goes in pocket three and four. 
Next, I'm gonna carefully try to pick up all of the remaining strips, leaving them in the order that they landed. And this colorful one here, that goes in seven and eight. Then the next two, and these kind of match, as you can see, they both go in pocket three and four. And the final two matching strips go in pocket five and six. Here's, there's one last cut apart, and we have to repeat the same process again by removing the, the outside perimeter by trimming along those crop marks. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so again, when you place this in the trimmer, make sure the smallest strips are always on the right and then they're running vertically. We don't want to cut through artwork and we like to remove the smallest pieces from the edge of the paper first. So initially we'll cut at 11 and a quarter, 10 and three quarters, 10 and one quarter, seven and a quarter, And four. Rotate this four inch piece so that the fairy tale portion is on the right. And we'll cut at 10 and six. Okay, now this larger piece as well as the larger square, both of those go in pocket five and six. The word fairy tale, seven and eight. And now we have the series of images. Just take a scissors and roughly separate the pieces. You can see this little really pale blue background and just kind of cut around that. Later on, we can go and do a little bit of fussy cutting. So the carriage, seven and eight. The unicorn, five and six. The stack of books. This is one of my favorite images from the collection. That goes in three and four. And then we have the dragon going in one and two. Okay, now we have a series here of journaling prompts. Make sure that the prompt is on the right and we'll cut at 10, eight, and six. All right, some stories. That goes in one and two. For journaling prompts, you have the, I think it's actually the dragon tail that goes in three and four. The carriage, seven and eight. The tiara, five and six. Now, this little purple strip, one of them goes in five and six, and the remaining two strips go in pocket one and two. That is all of the trimming required to make eight completed scrapbook pages, and you can see here the only uh, scraps that, I mean, of course, if you wanna find a home for them, you're welcome to do so, but these are my official scraps from eight pages. That's it, that's the only thing I'm not using. And um, at this point, I will detach my according to pocket file organizer from the base of my trimmer and set my trimmer aside. For this next phase of assembly, I like to do what I call the stack and slide. So you still have this stack of paper that remains, right? And the very top of the stack should be that beautiful pink paper. And I'm going to take the entire stack and put it to the left of the center of my workspace. So imagine this is the center line and all the remaining pieces are on the left of that center. Then take the top sheet and slide it over to the right so that you have two pink papers side by side. Then in your instructions, if you turn to page four, you're going to see layouts seven and eight. So what we're gonna do is dry fit all of these pieces onto these pages without using adhesive so that every piece has its proper home. And then on the top of the stack, when we're done with that stack and slide, you'll have layout number one. And then at a later time or even immediately, you can sit down with your adhesive and put the pages all together. It's gonna to go quickly and then come back with your pictures and add them to your pages. It's really an awesome and time proven process. We've been making our pages this way since 2005. So obviously it works, it works for us and our membership. And uh, many of us are like current with our photos, which is pretty cool. So here's the process. Now I'll take everything out of pocket seven and eight. So it's important you work from the back to the front. And there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm carefully keeping everything right side up because remember we, um, we worked with these duplex papers, so it's a little bit of a different process. Just gotta make sure you keep track of things. And I'm gonna take this largest piece with the unicorn on it, put that on the right side of this pink layout, flush with the edge. Then on the left, I'll put this other really uh, nice substantial title here. Now to kind of separate these pieces from the pink paper, I'm gonna add what I would call a paper ribbon. 
And in this case, the purple side is facing up, but if you prefer to, to make the blue side up, you can do that as well. It's totally designer's choice, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna flank this on either side with these little border strips. Again, you're not adhering anything at this point, so you have the ability to make lots of adjustments as needed. Now I'm gonna take one of these, um, let's see, there are two photo mats that are the same size. Those are gonna be placed vertically across the bottom on the left side. Then there's a larger blue mat that's gonna go horizontally on the right. You have a larger purple photo mat. Then you can find four rectangles that are the exact same size. So I'm gonna put two of them above this mat and two below. They puzzle in there just perfectly. Next you have that, remember that narrow coat that had the word fairy tale on it? It should have a buddy it can nest with and that's gonna happen over here. You also have a journaling prompt that has a buddy. This time it's the purple side facing up, that's gonna go here. Eventually you'll fussy cut the carriage from this base that's going to go kind of in this area and then you can also fussy cut a circle from this and that's going to be placed right about there so it's just pr approximately pl placing these pieces and then again when you go back you can add all the adhesive you know get out your grid ruler make sure everything's lining up nicely let's take a look at the finished pages and how this all worked out so over here you can see how this puzzled in beautifully and i used my grid ruler which happens to have a zero center i used that as i was adhering everything to make sure everything was nice and level and evenly spaced so if you look carefully <laughs> this is pretty cool um, you can see that here's my zero i have a six here at the top and bottom and that the edge of this photo mat is exactly at the same measurement here and here and then these as well are equally spaced and aligned well. So if you have a tendency of aligning things or failing to align them, I have a, I usually go off to the right, you know, this ruler kind of solves all of that. Now look at this embellishment uh, creation over here. It's kind of cool how I incorporated the ribbon and some of the other things that came in this kit. First of all, I made a three-part bow and I do have a special video just on ribbon. So if you need to review some ribbon basics, this is part of that video and I'll put the link in the bottom of the screen so that you can see where to go to find out how to make that. And then I att attached this with foam adhesive circles. I have some of those here I can show you. We do carry these um, in our store and I just, I cut them in half and use them very sparingly, but they, and they work great and I love the lower profile of this type of foam adhesive. And then I fussy cut this. Now on the original, you can see it has a lot of these little doodads stringing out. I just cut those off and just kind of went around the larger portion of the image. And then the tires kind of peek out. And so I tucked those on top of that, that blue mat and then the rest of the cut apart got tucked behind. So it's kind of a neat detail there. And then look, this is just a little lavender um, rose embellishment. On this piece, you can see originally that it's a tag shape. So once again, you can take your grid ruler and remove that corner from the tag with a craft knife, or you can just cut it off with the scissors, then nest this onto the purple and then repeat the removing of the angle there to create a tag. And then I just looped some of that same ribbon around the top of the tag after punching a hole. That's all there is to it. You know, again, doing all of this is optional I and mean, you can go very simple with this, but I really love how this uh, ties everything together and I can still kind of see that unicorn there in the lower right corner. On the left page, I cut this into a circle very carefully and for cutting circles just by hand, I know it's nice to have a die. I usually use my, this is ancient scissors, but it has a longer blade. So the longer the blade is, I feel like it's easier to cut a nice circle. So what I do is bring the blade open as far as I can get it, and then while I squeeze the scissor blade closed, I am rotating with my non-dominant hand. And you can see that I'm just getting a pretty nice circle. If you make a lot of small cuts, you tend to have a, a lot more uh, hard edges on your circle. So there you go, circle cutting 101. <laughs> okay, so then you know with the ribbon, I just made a nice little loop attached this, I taped the loop to the back and attached it with foam adhesive. Here I tied uh, some ribbon on top of this really beautiful embellishment. Now these are kind of substantial when they came in. I was so impressed 
with these. I, I got them because he reminded me of the mirror mirror on the wall, but you could also put a little cameo size image in there. Um, you know, designer's choice, right? I just thought it was kind of a cool addition to this uh, fairy tale style kit. Okay, so then what you do, now that we've reviewed sort of that final assembly, take layout seven, that's this guy, the pink paper, slide it and put it on top of eight. And then take the next print and move it over on top of layout seven. So now what you have in front of you are the pages for layouts five and six. Now this is kind of a blue shade. It's definitely more green in my printout, but every printer and computer screen is a little different. So in order to find all the things that go on this page, you'll open everything from pocket five and six. Oh, there's a little, I see a little embellishment that landed in here from the cards. Look at that. <laughs> I was wondering what happened to that. Okay, now I'm going to take everything. Notice I hold it all kind of in the palm of my hand. It makes distribution a little easier. And I think maybe to start, I'm going to find my three aqua squares. Okay, so put those down on the left edge of the right side. One, two, three. I know, I know I'm covering up the unicorn. It's going to be okay. <laughs> I promise. These blue pieces are going to go horizontally on the left and then in between them this helps to determine the separation between those strips I'm going to add these vertical mats and then we've got our once upon a time at the top and the matching border across the bottom looks like I'm missing a nesting piece for for that it's going to be nested I'll see if I can find where that where I accidentally had you file that <laughs> okay and then this the most Wonderful fairy tale is life itself. That's going to be nested onto that blue square. And in between them, I'm going to put this purple piece. This little aqua guy, if you take scissors and just cut a nice little V into that piece, you can tuck it behind this piece here. I'll show you more. This large element, you just do a real rough cut around the outside shape of the frame. And then this tiara tag, journaling prompt, nests. These three squares nest on top of the blue squares, cleverly and perfectly. Here's the word magical, that's gonna be spotted right there. The unicorn tucks behind here, and then we have these two it's the plain side of the print. Those squares are going to just bump right into that spot. I did locate this three quarter inch by 12 inch piece of blue in pocket one and two. I think I have to correct my instructions, so forgive me for that error. But that's going to go here and nested behind this little guy here, and that should finish out the page. As far as um, adhering everything down and embellishing, let's go over this, this first side here. I've got the silver wand charm. And to adhere that, I just used some bookbinding glue dispensed from a needle tip applicator. That works out perfectly. And then I've got a series of three of these purple um, rose embellishments. And I even added some lavender ribbon with a little swallowtail cut right there on top of it, you know, sandwiching in there. To finish this, I topped this with the ribbon and also fit a piece of just regular aluminum foil. If you happen to have like silver paper, we've included that many years ago and a few things, but um, anything reflective, if you have some Renea foil, that will look great um, in that medallion as well. Or just leave it open and put a picture there. It's up to you. Okay, so on this side, I did some fussy cutting around the oval shape of this uh, unicorn and tucked it behind this larger piece. Attach this with foam adhesive, and when you do that, just be careful not to get adhesive behind, you know, on top of the mat so you can still slide your picture through there. On the bottom, fussy cut the word magical from the background and then embellished it with a unicorn charm. This, once again, was attached with our bookbinding glue. It works great metal on paper. Three little puffy stars are accenting the journaling prompt, which is topped with the lavender ribbon after I nested it and punched a hole. That is layout five and six, my friends. So now I'm going to slide the base of five over to six and slide this on over. And now I'm going to look in my instructions, turning to page three. So we're working backwards. And here we have arrived at layout three and four. So what that means is I need to take everything out of pocket three and four see what we have here. Not a lot of stuff on this slide. That's kind of handy. I'll begin by putting this horizontal strip across the bottom 
and then an intersecting vertical strip. Then within this space, I'm going to add two pink photo mats, and that's going to determine where this goes and where this goes. So you just kind of box it in there with nice even spacing. To the right, then it'll fit perfectly with the castle. And then you should be able to find this uh, purple piece that's the same width. So if it's not, rotate it. <laughs> Make sure it's the same width and then top that with a fussy cut stack of books. On the left, I've got, I'll rotate this so it's facing the right way. I've got two vertical blue mats kind of tilted at an angle. Just watch to make sure that the corner of the mat doesn't touch the corner of the paper. Pink will go here, followed by a nested journaling prompt. Wow, that was really nice and easy. For finishing touches, I just stretched the, the ribbon across on this border strip before, before I layered this on, and then I made a basic bow. Once again, I covered that in my Ribbon Basics video and um, added it to this area with a glue line. Here's the fussy cut book, love that, popped out of that, and then finished with a star, puffy star right above this. Really sweet. Okay, then for layout three, we're just clipping right along here. Nothing complicated about this. I kept it simple. I love what's going on with the print here with the castle on the left. This is perfect for your Disney trips. You got the big, you know, castle at Disney, Disney World, Magic Kingdom, wherever you go. Um, and then I just ran some ribbon from behind the tag and popped out at it. Once again, being careful to avoid having adhesive where uh, the photo will need to slide under there. Okay, so that was a quick one. I'm going to slide this on over. And then finally, now I should have in front of me everything needed for layout one and two if I empty this pocket here. Okay, so let's take this vertical strip with the dragon. He's going to go on the left. And then I'll take two aqua pieces. And those are going to go horizontally here. And then the other two will go vertically here. I know you're covering the carriage. Not a big deal. It's going to be all right. Now take two of the lavender and those should nest onto the aqua over here. Okay, so we have one strip that says, I call it magic when I'm with you, and that's going to nest onto this aqua strip. Oh, before we do that, I'm going to take another aqua strip, put it vertically here so it can nest with that. Nice. And then frame that in just like we did before with our distances. Okay, then this can go across on the top of that. Now, on this one, this is purple right now. I'm going to flip it over to the blue side, and it's going to top this and box that in, and I could even nest this little aqua on top. Okay, then a smaller mat is going to go in the right corner here, and incredibly, look at, this fits just right. So clip those corners like you have in the past, and it's going to layer here. I've got some embellishing touches that I did, and then the dragon and the circle will go here on the upper left. For finishing touches, after you glue everything down, again, I use my ruler to make sure that I don't glue this nested strip going downhill or uphill. I just square off the ruler by putting the straight edge, a line on the ruler matched up with the edge of my paper. That way I know it's level and then I attach it from there. Um, a lot of stuff going on here with this tag. First of all, I popped out at it, again, avoiding my adhesive in this spot, glued on the book charm. I absolutely adore that charm. And here I put the lavender piece just at the end of the tail and then the unicorn right here. And I took, after punching a hole, I looped ribbon through and just taped it around to the back. Nice and easy. On layout one, I did some fun stuff over in this left corner. Trimmed around that faded blue circle to create some dimension here, some uh, shape for the dragon. And then my, my nice circle cut here. Now if you do have a die, just go ahead and use it if you would like. But I mean, it's just quick and easy to, to cut it with scissors. Finish with the charm kind of aligned along the star that's printed on there, and then added just three white puffy dots here in the background. How fun is that? I 
love this set. It's the sweetest ever. So even if you have all boys, I think we did a nice job balancing the lavender, the aqua, the blue with a splash of pink. And it's just wonderful for all of those cool adventures that we have at some point with the kids or maybe a baby shower or even a fairy tale wedding. I think this is going to be spectacular. If you'd like to make cards and like this collection, be sure to pick up the, the page kit and do a really fun workshop. We complete 12 beautiful cards with the same type of fabulous papers in this fairy tale card kit. So join me for this workshop. We're going to have a lot of fun together and we'll see you there.